Hello, this is Andrew from PayPal again, and today I'm going to show you how to integrate PayPal into a single page application. So real quick, what's a single page application? Just simply an application that doesn't change pages um, with more modern uh, JavaScript applications. We can now write uh, a full checkout experience to where <clears throat> there's actually no page reloads on the server side. So let's take a look at how I'm currently doing this. Uh, you'll see there's one route. It's called route. It's called SPA here. So now um, if I hit checkout, it'll take me to like more of a payment page. But you'll see that we didn't actually change the route. It's still on the SPA page. So there was no server side refresh. So how does that actually how is that actually accomplished? Well, if you look at uh, the code here, I just have it separated out into sections. So we have like an ID of a cart, which would be your cart page kind of. Uh, and then I just set the style. So right now the cart page is a display of none, uh, which hides it. And then the payment section, which uh, is now shown. And this is just written in a little tiny JavaScript function down here. Um, to where we hide up, hide everything, and then just we just display uh, whatever route that we want. So typically, you're probably going to be using some sort of a framework um, like Angular or React or something similar. Um, so this just shows you um, a very basic single-page application usage here. All right, so now let's integrate PayPal into our single page application. So the first thing that I would do is go to the developer.paypal.com and grab um, some example code. The best spot here is for the interactive demo. We're gonna do a client side rest. So I would copy this and then start from there. All right, so now if we go back to our single page application, let's take a look at the code. All right, so we'll see that we have our cart page here and we want to place our PayPal button right here next to our checkout button. And you'll see that I already have the um, PayPal button container that I want here. So we just want to inject a PayPal button into this div ID. And then if we take a look at our payment page, looks like we only have a credit card option. So I've already done this for us, but we want to add a PayPal radio button, which I'm going to do here. And then we're going to enable this little piece of JavaScript that just shows the PayPal button. When you select that radio button, it's going to display this other container here. And we want to place another PayPal button uh, in this ID. So we'll have two PayPal buttons on this page. I'm going to save that. And just do a quick refresh and you'll see that we have our PayPal. But when we select it, we don't see anything because we haven't actually enabled the JavaScript yet. All right, so now we're actually gonna do the PayPal integration. So I've already actually done this for us since it's a little bit um, more intense of an integration, but I will go through and explain it in depth here. So I'm just gonna comment out this. So we had previously said that we had two um, buttons that we wanted to inject into. Here's the PayPal button container and the PayPal button. Um, so this is on our payment page, we're gonna inject into the button, and on our shopping cart, we're gonna inject into PayPal button container. So the easiest way to kind of create two buttons on one page is to um, just make an array of the button um, DOM IDs and then do a for each on them and then so you'll see that the button ID is now gonna it's gonna happen twice we're gonna call paypal.button.render twice and then we're gonna send it the button ID of the different buttons that we want to actually 
um, inject into. All right, and we're going to use our environment at Sandbox here. And then for our client, uh, this is a PayPal REST application client. If you currently don't have one of these, I have a video that demonstrates how to generate a PayPal REST application. And you should see it in the top right corner of your screen right now. So then we have our payment callback here. So all the payment callback does is uh, use the actions helper function to do a payment.create API on the client side, setting in an amount and a currency. So once the user clicks continue at PayPal, the unauthorized callback is um, executed and we provide more helper functions. What I'm doing here is I'm saving these helper functions inside of um, this actions PayPal actions variable, which is defined up here globally, so that I can use it later on in my application. And you'll see that I am calling this validate function. So if we look at the actual um, code for validate, once again, you're probably going to want to do this on the server side because uh, it's important to remember that these variables can be changed on the JavaScript on the client side. So all I'm doing is um, you need to do a, a query on your database to get the, the total of the cart, and then you can do a PayPal payment get request to make sure that the amounts of the um, transaction did not get uh, modified before it was sent to PayPal. So you'll probably want to do that on the server side, but I'm just doing it here for um, example on the, on the client side. And then I am doing a actions.payment.get, which is a uh, request to PayPal to get the payment information, since this is a single page application. And then I'm calling document get element by ID, all of these IDs, and I'm just injecting the information that I got back from PayPal, like the shipping information, um, the name, email, and phone. This is kind of like our confirmation page. So I'm just injecting that information into all these IDs. And then after I do that, I am doing a route change to the confirmation page. So this is our single page application where uh, it's just going to display our confirmation section at that point. Um, on cancel, I'm just going to alert that you canceled. You'll probably want to handle this a little differently in your app. Uh, and then on error, it's just going to alert and log that there was an error. Once again, you would want to handle that a little different in your application. And then finally, um, if we look at the um, confirmation section, um, when we're at the end of the confirmation page, we're going to have a button that says place order uh, that will actually finalize the transaction. And there I'm calling this execute payment function. And if you look at it there, it is using that um, PayPal actions that I saved up here from the unauthorized callback. And it's doing PayPal actions.payment.execute, which is actually going to execute the transaction. And then on the response, I'm going to insert the transaction details into these HTML fields. And then I'm going to change my route to the done page. All right, so that should be our entire integration. So if I go ahead and save at this point, and I go back to my page, and let's try out these different flows. So if I go to the SPA, all right, you'll see we have our PayPal button here. And when I click it, you'll see our nice little pop up. And then I'm going to log in with my buyer account. Now when I select continue here, our unauthorized callback will be called, at which point I am looking up the payment information at PayPal, and then I'm going to inject into the HTML and kind of show you that confirmation view. So there we go. Once again, we did not change um, pages here. It's the same page we started on. Now we're looking at the confirmation information. So this is all pulled from PayPal. 
And when I click place order here, it's actually gonna call that actions.payment.execute that I had saved from that unauthorized callback to actually execute the payment. So when I hit that, we see that we get a payment ID, a transaction ID and the transaction information. All right, so that's kind of the express checkout shortcut. So I'm gonna show you uh, the mark flow. We're just gonna go back to our SPA initial page here, which is gonna show the cart. When I click checkout, you'll see that we now have a PayPal button. And when I click PayPal, you'll see that we now have a PayPal button and I select PayPal. You'll see our pop-up come up. And this should do about exactly the same thing that we just saw on the ECS. When I click continue here, it's just gonna inject, get that information from PayPal and inject it into our confirmation view and display it. And then when I click place order, it's actually gonna do the payment execute and we're gonna get a transaction ID. All right, and you'll see transactions completed and we are done. And that is it for this demonstration. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, stay tuned for some more videos here in the near future.